Hi everyone. So the tune have been absolutely outplayed, out dominated, whatever you want to call it. Absolutely shocking performance today at St. James Park. This is the lads' reaction slash group reaction. Uh, there is four of us. Brandon's currently at the pizza shop, so we'll be bringing him in um, a little bit later in about ten minutes or so. But yeah, we're going to crack on. I'm joined by Matt and Carl. Obviously, seen Matt early on today on scoring the players. Um, Carl just said quickly, what was your initial thoughts on the game? Um, I'm trying not to swear. Um, so <laughs> terrible, terrible. They'll go. Um, I'm just. Oh, I'm, 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 pardon? You just don't want to talk about it, do you? I'm, I'm furious. I'm absolutely furious. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was just just poor all over the park. Poor all over the park. Kind of disagree. I want to begin first of all with the um, the opposition um, Brighton because I want to have a look at their lineups and. Matt, when you when you when you seen their lineup, did anything like pop out and you think, "Oh, we've got to watch out for him. We've got to watch out for this person," because you think well, I know. more work. Uh, on that, you? Yeah, I mean, uh, I know it's good to have the hindsight, but uh, watching the Chelsea game with Brighton last week, they looked dangerous. You know, Chelsea are a top top team, and Lamptey caused a lot of those problems from right back. You know, um, and obviously we've seen him punish us today, but obviously him, he, he's a, a main problem for us looking looking at those teams. But then. Also, that front three of Connolly, Mopé and Trossard, they're a dangerous trio. Like, Trossard scored a brilliant goal against Chelsea and Mopé and Connolly will hassle the centre-back. So, looking at that team, it doesn't look on the face of it dangerous, but we know that, that the grafters in that team and they're going to press you high and force you to make mistakes and that's what they did today and they punished us for it. Do you think there'll be more attacking this year? I know they've, they play better football without Hutton there, which obviously Hutton was probably harshly... Um sacked but they play better attractive football but now are they going to attack teams more it seems that as that way because they've got the uh the solid base at the back they've got a good goalkeeper and a solid back three or a back five depending on how they play and uh you know pot a ball you know we might see them finish higher than 13th i think 13th is the highest they've ever finished uh in the premier league so uh we'll see hopefully see them play attacking football because i've wanted them to get relegated for about three four seasons now so if they start playing some more interesting football it might actually be exciting to watch them when was the last time we scored against Brighton? God only knows. Was it, was it the Championship days? I think it might be. Because that kind Maybe of... Been, someone, someone's going to correct us in the, in the chat, so please let us know. When was the last time Newcastle scored against Brighton? Because it seems to be forever. Uh, Carl, Newcastle's lineup. Do, can you argue against it? Because we beat West Ham pretty comprehensively last week, and it's exactly the same 11. Are you, are you happy with what he went with? So I, ju I was just thinking about this just before coming on, and I think we all we were all in agreement that everything worked perfectly for West Ham. Now none of us are footballing experts, so we don't have the facilities to to go out there and kind of scout what Brighton play like, other than what we see um, on on the likes of Sky Sports, for example, and what Matt's just said there. So us being non-professional sports people yes I think we're all in agreement that the best thing to do was crack on where we where we left off with West Ham last week but in hindsight if Steve Bruce has got the same mindset as us and he's not scouting out how Brighton play then what does that say about his tactics he, he's just becoming more apparent that he's tactically in it for me so yeah initially I was happy but it's easy to say in hindsight I just think maybe he he's not he's not up to the up to the job personally do you feel maybe Almiron or even Fraser feel a little bit hard done by because they performed well in midweek? Yeah, definitely. But like I say, it's, it's it's really tough to to get him straight away because we all wanted that lineup, didn't we? I think we're all in agreement that that was the lineup to go with initially. Um, but like I say, we don't have the facilities to to scout out how Brighton play and, and adjust our team accordingly. He should be doing that, and he hasn't. He's gone the same with the same sort of mindset we've got, and we've we've been punished for it. So, yeah, I think they are, that they they should be agreed. Yeah, definitely. Right, let's dissect the game, and then later on uh, we'll have a look at some talking incidents, and of course Brandon's coming shortly. But um, straight away, Matt, within three minutes, Alan St. Maximum, what what is he doing? It's reckless, it's pathetic, and it's and it's hard to criticise him, but, but defensively. That is very, very unprofessional. He just goes sliding in three minutes in. It's a blatant penalty, isn't it? Yeah, that's spot on. Like, there's people saying that, yeah, he got the ball. He did get a toe on the ball, but he went through the man to get it. But for me, the main problem with that whole passage of play was he let Lamptey go. He just let him drift past him before he'd even got into the box. And then he had to struggle to recover. That's why he lunged in and committed the foul. 
we know Sam Maximan isn't the best defensively. He likes to play on the front foot. He doesn't like to trap back very much. But even for him, that was poor. Like he let his man go, left Lewis completely for dead, and then he's lunged in. It's a proper forwards challenge, and it's just let the, he's let himself down, and he's let the team down with that kind of challenge, and he never recovered from it. He had a really poor game today. Yeah, we'll touch upon his performance shortly. But Carl, what was your initial thoughts? Obviously, more pace steps up. You think Darlow's actually pretty decent at penalties, but it's straight down the middle and one nil down. Is the positive to come from that? Is still very early on in the game. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it's it's um, it's like like you, yourself and Matt have said, it's 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 terrible from from Maximan, but it's four minutes in. There's plenty of time to go. You think maybe it'll give the lads a um, a kick up the arse and and we'll crack on from there. But obviously, it just just went went even more downhill. So yeah, I wasn't expecting him to go down the middle, to be honest. And clearly, Darlow wasn't either. So yeah, um, but I thought I wasn't too worried. Um, I thought we'd bounce back from it, but I, clearly we didn't. Yeah, OK. So we're obviously 1-0 down. You think, no, oh, it's OK. You know, poor by Alan St. Maxim. It's his fault. Not often we blame him. But only a few seconds later, they carry on with VAR. But Matt, I'll come to you on the on the second goal because I've already said it in the score and the players, I think all four of them are at blame. Johnny Slate disagrees with me. What's your initial thoughts on who's at fault? Because if you look at it, obviously it's played just on side. I pull up the graphic there, and you look at that there. Jamal Lewis obviously isn't looking at his man. You can, two, you can see Fernandez and Jamal Lascelles trying to play offside. Mancio's yeah. trying to step back a little bit, but it's actually Mancio who plays Trossard on. Who's to blame here? For me, I, I, I know in the uh, scoring the players, you, you said both fullbacks are pred- predominantly to blame. But for me, Mancio doesn't do too much wrong. Yes, he plays the player onside, but it's marginal. It's just by like a toe. And I don't really think we can blame him for that. What what I really sticks out for me is, again, Sam Maximan. I know he's kind of away from the play, but that's why Lewis has had to step up and try and take on Lampy. He's, he's identified Lampy as the threat, and Hayden hasn't dropped in and filled in for Lewis. So Lampy's come on. He's got the overlap on the outside with the winger. And then the centre-backs have let Morpé go free in the middle for an easy easy tap in. Um, you could say Darlow could do better, but it's a good finish right into the corner. But I think... Three of the back four are definitely at fault there, but also Sam Maxon and Hayden are culpable for not filling in those defensive duties when their defenders need help. They've not helped out the rest of the team by not filling in and tracking back. Carl, what's your thoughts on that goal? Um, I, I'm trying not to bash him too much because I knew that, but I thought I think Jamal Lewis has been a, a, a lot of fault for a lot of things today, to be honest. Um, but then that being said, I think that's just a whole thing down the left-hand side. Even when Maximan went off, he, he didn't receive much help. He, I said it last week, there was a couple of periods where he was drawn into the middle too much. And I got bashed for that. And he's done exactly the same today. Whether that's poor communication from the Sowers and Fernandes and the tracking back wingers. Um, so he's got drawn in, but he didn't. He wasn't pressure putting enough pressure on their wingers at all. Whereas on the other side, when it was happening, you had Mankio and Fraser were constantly on the edge of the 18-yard box, pressuring the wingers. Joel Lewis had no one around him, and whether it was him or there was lack of communication, he was constantly being targeted. And he was just... I saw him more on our six-yard box than I did in, in his own position, if that makes sense. And it was just infuriated me. I think... I'm probably been a bit harsh putting it on him, um, but the whole left-hand side in general was an absolute shambles to that. Absolute shambles. And I agree with what Matt said as well. He's probably not received enough help from Hayden and shall we, to, to drop in as well. Yeah, and it's strange because last week it was the other way, especially for the top. Brandon, you've joined us. Lighten my mood a little bit. What are you munching? What are you drinking? Bavaria and uh, just a pizza. What pizza is it? Kebab pizza. Kebab. Kebab. With some uh, garlic sauce. So. Pretty good, man. Matt's nodding. Matt likes oh, that. Aye, I do. Then I don't have meat on a pizza. <laughs> I'll stick with the boring margarita. Margarita and <laughs> cheese. Bit of cheese, Kind of yeah. boring, yeah. Ah, uh, well, that's me. What you drinking now, Lee? What's Bavaria? Is that Dutch? Yeah. I get, always get it's, from, always get, it's from the south, uh, from the south of uh, the Netherlands. I always get confused with uh, Bavar- Bavaria, as in, as in Bayern Munich, all the time. That's where I get the confusion. Okay, from. okay. Right, we'll move on from um, Brand. Brand's a bit of a character. You might see him do some odd stuff in this stream. Um, Never will, mate. Never will. Brandon, you've obviously watched the game. We're two 0 down after what, six or seven minutes. Yeah. 
what's happening? What was going on? I don't know. Uh, looks more like we play Lemsey, man. Either the kid was all over the place, like positively. It, it looks like he played defending, attacking in midfield. He, he slated us. Yeah. I don't know. Matt, it's... Matt, how good was Tyreek Lamptey today? Uh, he was incredible. He could, I think he could have just played him versus our 11 players and he probably still, still would have won. Um, Chelsea would be kicking themselves that they've let him go. Obviously, he turned down the contract. It wasn't really their decision. Um, but he was absolutely fantastic. Probably the best player for them when they played against Chelsea. And undoubtedly the best player today. Um, how the hell you run a show from right wing back, I'll never know. I'll never understand it. Um, but he had Sam Maximan on strings. He had Lewis on strings. He had the centre-backs on strings. He was unlucky to score um, when Darlow made, actually made quite a good save getting low down. But um, I, I think he was only on the pitch for less than an hour and he's still man of the match for me. Yeah, got to. I think he was sensational. I know um, Johnny was saying in scoring the players that you like Basuma's performance, but you think about England's right-back currently at the minute, Carl, if we just mm. switch off dead, dead briefly, we're blessed at right-back, aren't we? Definitely, absolutely. Um, I, I agree. I, I, I've not seen a lot of him other than this season and bits and bobs, but today was absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. You know, if it's a tough, well, good, but a tough decision for, for Southgate in that area, definitely. There is. Eugene then Kieran Tripp has there and you've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, Lamptey, Kyle Walker. I probably missed someone off, haven't I? Um, is this a blessing in disguise, Brandon, that Alan St. Maximum was injured? Because he went off Free as I came yeah. on. Well, and... Steve Bruce had definitely something to do about that situation. Because ASM, I don't know, he probably picked up a knock on that uh, challenge with uh, Lemsey. Not really sure what happened there, but like he, he got a knock there. And from that point, he definitely couldn't catch up with Lemsey anymore. He had to do something. So, yeah. Should he subbed him off a lot earlier because he was injured for a good 10 minutes or so? Yeah, I would say so. But... Uh, uh, as a professional ASMS, he probably wouldn't admit that and try to run it out and see if it still goes. So I kind of understand, like, ASM probably said, like, I'm fine or, yeah. But from Bruce's side, probably, yeah. Like, Liam Lee, Lee made a good point in the group chat. Uh, switch Hendrik for ASM from left to right. I think that that kind of worked out, but probably should have brought him Miggy Armadon earlier. Sure. Yeah, we'll break. We'll come on to Miggy in a minute. But Matt, you were talking about um, all we were about Alan St. Maximum quite a bit on scoring the players. Without doubt, his worst performance in the tune shirt. Absolutely. I mean, the, the style of play that we went for today, you know, sitting back and trying to hit them on the counter, it just doesn't seem to suit him. Uh, whenever he gets the ball at his feet, he just wants to slow down the play in the attack. And sometimes that works. But when you've got players like Callum Wilson who want to get in behind quickly and hit the defenders on the break, it just doesn't gel. And then defensively, it was absolutely appalling. We know he's given away the penalty. He didn't track back for the second goal. And he just didn't look interested after that. His head went. Well, the, the whole team's heads went, to be honest. But um, he was one of them as well. And I think it was quite lucky that he did take a knock early on to force him off. Hopefully, it's not too serious because he is one of our better players going forwards and he's hopefully he's not out for, for a, a long time because I do want to see him back in the starting 11. We kind yeah. of give up, right? Uh, after that 2-0, we kind of gave up and looked panicked in the back as well. Like uh, shooting balls in the air and like just panicking mm -hmm. for nothing. Half interested, half interested defensively. And Carl, you were mentioning yeah. that just briefly. Um, is that a worry for you? If you if, if the game's not going right and Alan Maximum's he's not shrugging his shoulders, of course not, but if it's not going right for him, you've seen it a day... Jamal Lewis has called over a couple of times, help me out, help me out. And we were talking and scoring the players as that. Do you expect to see those two against the big six? Jamal uh, Lewis, Alan St. Maxman. I don't know now. I really don't. Um, I think there, before we signed Maximan, there was a lot of talks, wasn't there, previously from his previous club that he had a bit of an attitude problem. And thankfully, we've not seen any of that at all, really. That's all. Um, do I think maybe he's shown a little bit of that today? Uh, yeah, I do. I, part of me wants to say that he might not have fancied it and he's gone off for that reason. That's probably me being a bit harsh as well. Um, after what's gone on, maybe his head's gone and he's, he's thankfully, maybe he's wanting to go off. I don't know. I hope not. But um, yeah, I mean, 
if it's not those two, who is it going to be moving forward against the big six? I'm not sure who who, who we play instead. I'm really not, especially in the left fullback position. You've got we, go, I was going to say, do we, do we go with a bit more consistency and put them in there? Maybe that is a good shout. Maybe Lewis needs a bit more experience. I don't know. Um, I think me personally, I, I would put them in there because um, I think you know I've, I've I've pointed out flaws from my opinion about Jamal Lewis so far. So I would I would drop them in there. Um, but does that does that help? Is is Maxman still going to be worse defensively? Probably. I think we had the same with Ben Arthur, didn't we? When you've got these 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 kind of maverick players, they don't tend to be defensively uh, defensively sound. So. Um, Yes, I'd, I'd drop them in there personally. What we do on the left wing, I, I don't know because I don't think Maximum would even be able to help them out in that situation. Does today's yeah. show we nearly uh, really need uh, Yetro Willems back? Hmm. Oh, let it go, Brandon, man. Let it go. <laughs> Seriously, he, he's tweeting about it. I don't know if it's to other clubs, PSV Eindhoven or uh, Eintracht Frankfurt, but I'm just hoping, man, because oh, it, it, it will be a good competition with Lewis and maybe they work each other up. I don't Close. believe you, Brandon. You just want someone to touch. That's all you want. That's all you want. Get, um, get Tim Crow back. <laughs> <laughs> Sentimental values. Just a quick question then, Brandon. You mentioned Willems, but I just want to go back to Alan St. Maximum and Lewis. Mm-hmm. Two games. Let's. People are going to be in the in the comments saying it's only been two games. First half against West Ham, brilliant. Today, not so good. Do I have to allow this relationship to build? Jamal Lewis and uh, Alan St. Maximum, you mean? Yeah. Well, they're still new to each other, right? So might give them a few more games, see if they're catching up to each other. Uh, so I wouldn't slay them off immediately. When we when Lewis came in, we, we saw him as a big talent and we were all like really enthusiastic. So not slay them off immediately, I would say. Okay. Right. Half time came then. Um, you think of how it looks, you've got to change it. And he did, Matt. He brought off Andy Carroll, who was a ghost. We talked about it in the previous video. He was, <laughs> where was he? But it was the right decision to bring in a midfielder because Brighton were overrun. We looked a little bit better going forward, didn't we? Yeah, um, I mean, overall, the second half wasn't much better than the, the first, but we did we did look a bit more organised. We put the pressure on Brighton rather than them putting the pressure on us to start with. Uh, Miggy came on, offered a bit of cover on the left. The moment that stood out to me in the second half was uh, the counter-attack. I think it was from a free kick or a corner of ours, and Lampty was in behind again. But Miggy managed to outpace him and get get behind, and uh, that was something that Sam Maxman or Hendrick, when he switched to the left, didn't offer us. Uh, but yeah, the change in formation seemed to work out better for us. We had a bit more security in midfield with uh, three centre mids, Shelby, Hayden, and Hendrick, and then Callum Wilson actually looked a bit more comfortable as a sole striker than he did in a, a pairing in this game. Anyway, obviously he played quite well as a two in the West Ham game. But the uh, the change from uh, from Carroll to Miggy and the formation change did spur us on to a little bit. Obviously, it didn't result in a goal. Maybe it should have. Um, but we did change our outlook for the second half, yeah. Yeah, it was like a 4-2-3-1. Just, uh, we're talking about passengers there, Carl. For me, I thought Jeff Hendrick was a bit of a passenger today. Yeah, um, I think we both agreed he was a bit of a passenger in the first half last week, um, which, you know, because it's understandable because it's his first game, essentially. But I forgot who was playing, to be honest. Well, I think some uh, the commentators talked about him late in the second half. I generally forgot he was on the pitch. Um, I don't think he had much at all today. But I don't think anyone did, <coughs> other than like you know when Miggy came on, he was he, he was Miggy. I think arguably he was probably our best player today, um, or not not argue arguably. Um, yeah, he was, Jeff Hendrick was definitely a passenger today. Definitely. Yeah, there's a couple, and it feels like we're playing against ten, nine or ten men. Brighton made them look like Brazil and blue. Um, Brandon. The, the, the yeah. golden chance for me came after the hour mark and Wilson's miss. Um, now, we had it over and he's free. How does mm-hmm. he miss it? Do you see it late? Because if this is Joe Lytton, Joe Lytton gets slated. Yeah, true. But I think Kel Wilson will score this one eight out of nine, ten, eight out of ten times. Uh, I don't know. He just probably timed it wrongly. He was already on his way down when he had it. That's why it goes over so much. I don't know. I would say he probably scores this eight out of ten times. But if he scores that, though, Brandon, it's a different game. Yeah, for sure. It was an important uh, time in the game as well. Important point in the, it, it was could be an important point of the game. Seriously, uh, if you score that one, two, one, you still have like thirty minutes, twenty-five minutes to go. Could uh, at least have a draw somehow. Luckily, maybe use Bruce luck a little bit. 
I yeah, if that goes into different game map because it didn't. But even still, Brighton were coming out. We've seen Trossard hit the post. I think we did hit the post early on the game. It was offside. I can't remember. It was on yeah. the outside. But the, Brighton was still in that second half for me dominant. I mean, I don't know if you'd glad to agree with me. For me, the second half, I think, was worse defensively for us because, like you say, um, he hit the post, Trossard hit the post. They had that goal late on, but they also had a goal disallowed for Connolly, um, which was just offside, and Connolly hit the post again. You know, that's four goal chances for them in the second half. Um, maybe that was because we were pushing on a little bit more. Uh, we didn't have as many stupid mistakes like we did in the first half, but because we were attacking a little bit more, they, they created more chances against us on the break, and Trossard, Mopé and Connolly really stood out as an attacking trio and put Lascelles, who picked up an earlier booking under real pressure, uh, asked him to make challenges that he didn't want to make. And obviously the fullback struggled to keep up with them, which, which led to the third goal, which I'm sure we'll touch on earlier. Uh, sorry, later. Um, but yeah, it was really shocking game all round. And the second half, defensive, uh, second half defensively was just as bad as the first, in my opinion. Carl, do you think the fact that we did pick up three early yellow cards in the first half... Um, put the player's mind in doubt that they didn't want, didn't want to challenge not challenge, that's not the right word, but fearful of being sent off I think I think in this day and age, the way the Premier League's gone with VAR and stuff, yes it has it positives, but I think yeah, this can be this can be seen as al almost a detrimental effect on how those types of players play their game because Isaac Hayden bases his game around that really, let's be honest um, so if he can't throw a challenge in it and and, uh, and be able to put himself about as much as he wants to, then yeah, it's obviously going to have an effect on us. Um, yeah, I was just I'm just so furious about to there. Honestly, I'm lost for words. Absolutely lost for words. Like Matt's just hit the nail on the head there. Like we're not we're not exaggerating. We could have quite comfortably lost seven nil today. It could have yeah. been seven nil. Do you think Brighton were that good, Carl, or were we that bad? I think it's a mixture of the two. Um, obviously, we were very bad, but let's not take credit away from the likes of, um, you know, the whole Brighton attacking trio and, and the midfielders were excellent today. And we just weren't at the races at all. Will any team play better than Brighton this season at St. James Park Hall? I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> What's the story? If you're an away fan, that's some performance. Oh, absolutely. It's a fantastic, fantastic performance. Um, you know, I expect that sort of performance from the likes of Man City against us, maybe. But, you know, if, we, if we're getting that week in, week out, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. So I'm going to say I, I really well hope not. Lee, how much credit does Jamal the Sells have? Before, I, I would like to see instead of uh, Jamal, even though he's a real leader, though. Don't get me wrong, I laughed a lot. But maybe try Fernandes and Clark. Instead of Jamal and Fernandez. But the thing is, Jamal's your captain, though. Um, yeah. I, I know, I know. That's what I'm saying. But like, I, you're not going to say it happening, is it? I know uh, Benitez did it once in the opening start of the season, but that was it. But um, who's who's got the hammer, Brandon? Who's hammering? What does that mean? Seriously, I don't know. What you... Who's who's got the hammer around you? Your neighbours, the bashing. Oh, I don't know actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> heard that, but someone's got oh yeah, no, yeah. I, yeah I, hear, I hear him now uh, it's like someone further away next block Tell I, see, I, see, I see them working on the roof tell them to be quiet <laughs> <laughs> how am I shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> right so, sorry for that man sorry. All right. back to the third goal then um, game wrapped up Connolly, the Irishman, finds himself on the edge of the box, left hand side. Marcel backs off. You've just talked about him. And Connolly just clips one, bends it. Great finish. 3 0, game over. Yeah. Yeah. It was um, Lascelles backing off. I don't know what he's doing. Um, for me, well, Mankiel is at fault as well because he's completely drawn out of position. I can't remember if it came from an attack. Um, but Lascelles is about five yards behind the rest of the defensive line, plays with Connolly on side. By that point, Connolly's created five, ten yards of space to, to take a touch, set himself, and bend one into the far corner. Carl Dahl has got absolutely no chance. It's a fantastic finish, but the defence should be cutting that out far, far earlier than that. A really, really poor defending. And if you think our next Premier League game, I think, is against Tottenham next weekend, and they play a very similar formation to, to uh, Brighton. You know, they've got three at the back. They've got Doherty on one wing and uh, either Ben Davies or their new signing Reggie on, on the left wing as their attacking full-backs. And then Son and Kane, who's bagged 
four assists and a goal for Kane and four goals for Son today. And then even potentially Gareth Bale might be fit for the next game. We don't know. Um, so you look at that and they've scored five against a half-decent Southampton team today. You think, how many are they going to bag against us? Yeah, let's worry, let's worry about Spurs a little bit, a little bit later on in the week because I think uh, that, I dread that. Um, Does anyone know who lost the ball you, uh, in the third goal? Does anyone know? The first goal? The third, yeah. third goal, third goal. Is have a guess, Lee. Account? Have a guess. No, I know who it is, but have a guess. It, it will not be a surprise if I tell you who it is. Was it John Joe? Oh, Joe. No, it was Joe Linton, no. of course. Who, who could oh, it be? Oh, of course. <laughs> Good job you scored the one then, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be his one touch that he had in the game. Yeah, the one. Um, Just on that as well, by the way, John Joe Shelby's passing today was dreadful. He was, he was awful. Uh, really, he's he's. I think he's a second captain for us if uh, the South goes off, and he absolutely lost his head. That the foul to get his booking today, he just tried took a kick out of Lampy. Uh, if you're going to take a cynical yellow card, at least go through the player. It's yeah. just a cynical foul. He's got no force. At least, like I know it's a horrible mindset to have, but at least go like give him a good kick in. But right. he's just tap on tap on the shins. He's taking a stupid booking, and then he's got thrown off by the ref. Pulled off by the ref later on for uh, getting mouthy as well. He could have easily been sent off. And you don't need that kind of performance from someone who's supposed to be a leader in the team. Definitely, I agree. Because you know, we all thought he's come away from that. Do you know what I mean? He's grown. And the last thing we want is him getting back to that. But I think it just shows how, how frustrated everyone was. I think everyone probably realised how badly they have played today. He's yeah. kind of the same, having uh, the same attitude as Mr. Fizz has, right? John Joe. As what, mate? As like, uh, if he gets frustrated, he, they make like stupid errors and stupid falls. Uh, Mitrovic did the same thing. I loved both, but uh, by the way, happy birthday, Mitro. But yeah, <laughs> uh, it's I a couple of days ago. Know, but John Joe, I think um, at the moment I'm not too concerned. I'm last year, I think because his his discipline has improved. But if yeah, it, absolutely. Yeah, I, I I agree in that one though. I think it's it just is. one of those where you've just got to be careful. Watch what is because if it happens again, then it'll bring it in. Um, I guess it's a little bit old John Joe Beck, right? Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes I don't mind the uh, bit of aggression. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Speaking of aggression, um, we haven't got an <laughs> image of it, but the Suma, um, kind of comical a little bit, isn't it? Um, Matt, is it a red card when he flicks it? Because he goes to try and flick the ball, doesn't he? Yeah. I mean, in today's day and age, it's absolutely a red card. Because, he, yes, he's not intentional. But his heel's gone over his head. He's not looking at the play at all. But at the end of the day, his studs have gone directly in Jamal Lewis' face. And it's not, da- it's not um, intentional, but it is dangerous. You know, he could have blinded Lewis. You know, if his toe catches him or maybe his heel and not the studs, then maybe get away with a yellow because he's not meant it. But the ref's rightly gone to the VAR screen on the side of the pitch and he's upgraded the yellow card to a straight red. I think, personally, I think that's the right decision. I don't know about you, lads, if you agree. I agree, 100%. It's dangerous. I, 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 I understand what you're saying. I just thought it's harsh. But obviously, I'm basing that on football from years ago, not on today's game. You know, looking at it in today's game, I absolutely understand where everyone's coming from. I just felt for the lad because you could, you could see there was no intent there. Obviously, he's gone straight over to Lewis to check he's yeah. all right. But it's today's game, so I suppose I can't argue with that at all. Yeah, I have to agree. Yeah. It, it, I don't think you, it was intentional, but um, his leg's that high and he kicked him in the heat. So, yeah, he's got to go, unfortunately, it's just the way the rules are. And he accepted it as well. Yeah, he did. He didn't even argue. And, 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 and he showed he's a good sport as well. He was more carried, uh, caring yeah, about uh, Jamal than... He was actually caring about the red card. Yeah. It, just, yeah, just, it, it helps if you're freeing up, though. But Just talking about Basuma, you guys might have seen it, but there's a clip going around where he's laughing on the pitch. I don't know if you've seen this on Twitter or anything. I think it was against, I'm sure it was Arsenal, that Arsenal conceded or something against Brighton. Yeah. You've seen yeah. it, Miami? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So uh, I really check it out. I didn't rate him when he first signed for Brighton, but he's turned out to be quite a player. He looks like he's going to be... He ran the game again, like we said earlier. Um, he looks like he's going to be a, a real fit, a real top player for them this season, hopefully. Yeah, Johnny has rated him very highly today. Uh, so, obviously, we've got beat, which is... Well, we can all express how disappointed we are. Outperformed as well. And we do have a, a few fixtures to come up, which we are concerned about, um, which we'll come on to Morecambe in a second. But... Carl, I'll come to you. Are we going to have, are we expected, not expected, no, I'll, no, we are. I'll say we are. Are we expected to have days like this throughout the season? Because yeah, 100%. 100%. It's, uh, I think 
Look, I, I said to some some lads of mine this this week. They said, "Where do you re- realistically want to finish?" I said, "Honestly, you know, top of the, top of the the tree for me would be around tenth. But if it ended up like last season, I'd be happy because I think that's where we're we're still at at the moment. I think, you know, we've made some good signings. It's going to take time to gel, but I think um, we're going to pick up results against teams that we shouldn't pick up results against. So against Spurs, against City, we're going to do that. That's just the type of side we are." And we're going to lose against sides that really we shouldn't lose against. We're going to get played off the park against Brighton when really we shouldn't be. So, you know, I'm not surprised. It's frustrating, but I'm not, you know, I know I've been quite negative, but I'm not I'm not saying that the wheels are falling off by all means. I think, you know, we are going to have these days that that's Newcastle at the end of the day. Yeah, um, Matt, as um, Brandon has some sort of party going on in front of him. Um, <laughs> it, you no, we need... Name- my neighbours is doing uh, the, uh, the hair of uh, a friend of hers. It's all going on. You're, you're always the star of the show, you, Brandon, every week. Um, Matt, how are we expected to, you know, because obviously last week we're all on a high. It's brilliant. We're what a performance. Brighton, ugh. But would you put a pass yeah. Newcastle put in the performance against Spurs now? I mean, it's that, that would be the Newcastle thing to go and beat Spurs 3-0. Like, we'd, we're perfectly capable of that. But this game today is probably the most apathetic game of football I've watched Newcastle play since Steve McLaren. And I don't know where it's come from because we had such a positive start to the season. Uh, but I, I was just, I was sat on my sofa, just like almost in tears watching it today. And I, I can see us pulling off a result against Spurs, but they look, they look a good team. Obviously, they lost the first game against Everton, but Everton look excellent this year uh, and we know Mourinho um, is a good manager he doesn't like coming up here but um, I think is it uh, home or away next week I can't remember away oh, away I think Great. yeah I think that's right I can't even remember, yeah, yeah. I can't remember but yeah. he always says nice stuff against Mourinho because of Bobby so yeah, uh, yeah got, got a bit of time for Mourinho especially when he comes yeah. up to St James Park but um, Carl is there any positives player wise anything say, up here uh, Miggy, for me, like he's he's come on both times and thrown himself about. He, and Matt's made a great point where he, he's he's made it back and 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 won the ball. I think maybe he could be an answer moving forward uh, on the left wing if we're struggling at fullback per se in terms of defensively. Um, but yeah, I think I think Miggy was positive. I thought he really was. I don't think he put a foot wrong. I thought we had a bit more creative flair going forward. Um, I didn't. Uh, I'm, 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 people might disagree. I don't think Mankiel had that bad of a game, personally. I'm, he did nothing wrong. Yeah. Um, it was decent. I thought that was worse. Yeah. yeah, and I thought Callum Wilson, again, was making the right runs. Like that He was getting himself into space. I thought he was making the right runs. Some of his decision-making was a bit off, but, you know, Miggy would Crazy be the only okay. positive. Hmm. Yeah. Question can, we, can we talk about a player who we really miss? Jero Willems? <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost. Uh, no, Martin Dubravka. I think yeah. he might have saved the second goal. How much we need his, this, uh, this man? We need yeah. one. Yeah. Players, but I think with Dubravka, though, I think we would have got beat anyways today. Uh, of course, yeah. of course. But, I, like, I don't know. I, I think we, we probably still would have got beat, but I think the manner in which we got beat would have been different because, yes, he, he's a great shot stopper, but he's more than that. You know, he's an experienced head. He's a leader in the dressing room. So even at half time, giving those, bringing those lads up um, and maybe even forcing another goal, just with him knowing like he's got a bit of confidence with him at the back as well, um, might have made a difference. But, you know, if some butts with coconuts would all be fruit and fibre, et cetera, et cetera. I like it, Matt. I like it. <laughs> I don't know where that's come from, but like, yeah. I've not heard that one before. But... <laughs> Brandon, um, Matt Ritchie. He's not really getting a look in, is he? You would think so, though, right? Uh, why, why not? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, he probably, Bruce probably feels like he has to play all the new players first and also probably want to see where they're up about. I don't know. He knows what he got in Mitch, in uh, Richie, in Matt. So, would you, would, you, would you circle him and say he's a maybe that could still leave? <laughs> would you really see him leave? Not not me personally, but no, I think he's too important for the for the team. If he's on the bench in the lap for the first few games, that's probably going to tell you tell you a few stories, wouldn't it? But he's still a leader, and and everyone loves him. I don't know, like, uh, and he's important sometimes if he comes in. So I would definitely keep him. 
Yeah. Oh, keep, I'm just playing devil's advocate with you. Um, uh-huh. Wednesday right. coming up, obviously. Um, we are expecting a few changes, aren't we, Matt, for Wednesday? Yeah. No, well, you've got to be, really. I mean, no disrespect to Morecambe, but they're a lower league side. Uh, but then we can't, we can't take anything for granted. Uh, we've struggled past, past Blackburn, in all honesty. Um, yeah, but we've got to expect a few rotations. Those players that aren't necessarily getting a look in at the minute, um, maybe Kieran Clark getting another start, maybe trying him trying to force his way into that starting eleven, and maybe Joe Linton chance to get a goal, build his confidence, um, definitely rest some of those first team players ahead of the visit to Spurs. But uh, we've got to see some rotation in that starting eleven. Got to look to see what works and see what we can integrate into that starting eleven in the Prem to uh, advance. Carl, would you like to see any of the kids given a chance? Less uh, opposition, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, right, mate. Yeah, actually, yeah, because it because it is Morecambe, definitely. Um, what league are they in at the moment? too, is it? I think it's two. Yeah, yeah. I've got, to be honest, I'd like to see the majority of them out then. Definitely, definitely. Um, Maybe Lily Johnson get off the bench, make his de- like his professional debut, competitive. I know, obviously, Tom Allen's away out on loan. It was nice to see a couple of the lads uh, to get involved in the twenty threes. Obviously, we've got a couple of the midfielders who are involved. Uh, like Jack Young as well, he was uh, training. Uh, maybe Barlaise, I get a start. But obviously, yeah. when you talk about Spurs, Brandon, what would you like to see? Any changes for your next weekend? I think we have to go off uh, with Carroll. I think Carroll will be a good pin sitter, but this is not really going to work out, especially not for all season. So I think Bruce have to change his tactics a little bit about around the team. Uh, after he changed around to Fraser and Almiron, we look more promising. So if you bring in Carroll out next week against Spurs, who's coming in? Ooh, uh, you're on or just I, will, I, will, I will probably play Miggy around Wilson. I, I'm not sure. Or maybe Fraser. I don't know. I, I, I don't know yet. I have to see more of Fraser to answer this question. But for now, I would say Miggy. And I think Fraser... Start, start Miggy and maybe substitute Miggy in 17 minutes. Yeah, I think Fraser will start on Wednesday and that's possibly gives them a bit more, bit more game time. I would like to say... Hendrick come out and Fraser come in. Carroll come out and then Almiron come in. Matt, what's your thoughts on that? Um, I'm pretty similar to you. To be honest, I'd like to see a bit of a formation change. Um, if I was the manager, which, you know, it would be the dream, but I'm not. Uh, I'd like to see five at the back or at least a back three. Uh, well, not, maybe three in attack with uh, Lascelles, Clark and Fernandez as like the back three. And then obviously Lewis has got the uh, attacking potential to get forward. And then um, Mankio has been doing a decent enough job to keep his place as a wing back. And then the midfield two with a front three of Wilson, Sam Maximan, and probably Fraser for me, um, with Miggy coming off as an impact sub. Whether we need to change formation, move to a midfield four or something like that. But obviously, like I mentioned before, with Spurs' wing backs, they're going to give us a few problems. Um, but it would be good to, if we are going to sit back like we do, then it would have to be good to have some pace in the front three rather than Carroll sitting up top. Carl, give us. A three-word summary of today. <laughs> Can I swear without swearing? Without swearing. <laughs> Pardon? What's it for? Um, absolutely fucking shit. <laughs> that works. That works. What's what's that in Dutch? <laughs> it's Klota, man. What? It's Klota. Klota. It's good. It's good. It's good. <laughs> it's fucking shit. <laughs> yeah. Basically, basically. Right, that is a wrap, everybody. Can, 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 can I make a case real quick, though? Uh, should, we, should, should we be happy that this happens in the second game of the season and that maybe this is like a wake-up call for Bruce because I still got faith in a lot? And, oh, uh, yes, man, the positives. I like it. <laughs> like, right? Cool, Give let's have, let's be happy. And uh, sh- he, he was wrong about his start information. Western was pretty poor. And, like, let's, like, you know, let's... D- that just be a lesson for Steve. And yeah, absolutely. He got a week to figure it all out. We need to jump on the Chronicles Reb's website and read five things we have learned. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Right, that is a wrap, everybody. Sorry, it's not pleasant. We have been beaten. Real talk. We'll tell how it is. Let us know what you think, of course, of uh, all of the stuff that we've talked about today. We'll read your comments as well. If you want to get more stuff, you've got the Flick app, of course. Uh, we run that. Keep me up to date. Get downloading that. It's on the App Store as well. Um, and obviously, we'll see the guys for the preview for Morecambe slash 
aftermath of all the carry on from Wednesday night. Let's hope Newcastle are in the fourth round of the cup. Take care, everyone. Ta-da. Thanks, lads. Bye bye. Ta-da. Ta-da.